Okay, as you know, the church has three parts. The church militant, which are all of us here still on earth. The church triumphant, which we celebrated yesterday with all saints. All those who are already in paradise with God. And the church suffering. Those who are still in purgatory, making up for what's left, that little bit that's still left before they are completely consumed in that love for God. Any defect that is still left, that is, any punishment due to sin, which perfects them and prepares them for heaven. Our liturgy here today on this Feast of All Souls, that's the church purgant or suffering, our liturgy gives us that <clears throat> look of hope. And in fact, the souls in purgatory already have a great hope, though they are suffering terribly. That is said, the only difference between the sufferings of hell and the sufferings of purgatory are, or I should say is, that they know, the souls in purgatory know they are saved. They will enter heaven. So not that we should aim for purgatory, no, we should aim for heaven, of course. In fact, that's what our Lord is telling us in this gospel passage. Come all to me. We take our Lord by the hand. He will give us rest. He will bring us there. And to remind ourselves, we're never going to do it ourselves, alone. But with the grace of God, we can and we will. Then he goes on to say, take my yoke upon you, my burden. Tells us it's easy and light. Right? It is something which he himself already took upon himself. When he was here on earth, walking with us, with his disciples, etc., on earth 2,000 years ago, he took it upon himself. Yes, there was suffering, there was sacrifice. For our Lord, it was far more intense than, than anything we will experience because that's the intensity of his love for all of us. So that really just leaves the question, will we follow him? Meaning, will we too? That's what he bids us to do here, take upon that yoke, that suffering, that sacrifice. And that is why he tells us, it's easy, it's light. You see, it brings a great joy. It brings a great hope because it brings us closer to God. It helps us unite ourselves with him. And that is the very goal we have here on earth. That's why we're here, to unite with God. And there is nothing better than to be united with God. Because only God is fullness of happiness. Only God is eternal. There only can we find full of, uh, fullness of happiness. <clears throat> and that's what he bids us do. Take that upon ourselves, what he took upon himself already. And we will find, well, we will realize that hope. We will find eternal fullness of happiness. And that's why we, today we recommend ourselves to the souls in purgatory who still are suffering intensely. And they have shown us you know, on many occasions where they have appeared to you know, saints, but people, and they have left the marks of their suffering on, say, cloth or a piece of wood, whatever, or a book. I've seen such examples when I was in formation in Italy. You've seen the burn marks of their hands. They are suffering intensely in purgatory, far more intense than anything we suffer here. They need our help, our prayers, to be relieved of that as soon as possible. That's what we do here now. Make that would include even some of our loved ones who may still be there. We pray for them. We remember them. And they will be eternally grateful to us when they do reach paradise. And they will be praying for us and interceding for us. Let us then as we go about our day, remembering those souls, 
all the souls in purgatory, all souls that have gone before us, realize, of course, we too will follow, but with that great hope for all of us that we will achieve. Let us, or let us pray, we will achieve our union with God. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever.